Hey everybody, this is Amanda Elowesh, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about uh, my twin flame story. So I've talked about it, but not here, and I'm excited to share it with you. Um, <clears throat> last year, I was uh, engaged to a lovely man, and uh, we were in the process of planning our wedding and planning our life, and I had been invited to go to Hungary and speak at a festival, uh, the Ozora Festival, which is a psychedelic community um, festival that's all about psychedelics, music, workshops, um, performances, and stuff like that. It was a wonderful place to be. And uh, I, I had gone and done a little uh, road trip to Glastonbury and Stonehenge with a priestess friend, sister, and got all charged up there and then went to Hungary. And uh, the next day after I landed there, I taught a workshop and uh, went really well. I had a lot of people that wanted to talk to me. And so there's this long line of people waiting to talk to me. And uh, at the end of the line was this tall, handsome man. And uh, he was smiling at me. And I could see as I kind of, you know, kept my attention kept kind of going to him that there was this, this kind of filter or veil that went over my vision, my like internal perception of him. And he went from like kind of drawing my attention and kind of feeling mag magnetically attracted to him to kind of like this not seeing him as being quite as attractive. And uh, if you know me, you know that I do a lot of work with the subconscious. So I was kind of checking out what my said that that was that was something my subconscious was doing and I was really curious like why did that happen curious just stayed curious didn't have any answers and uh, finally made his way up to the front of the line and we had a lovely brief conversation but I had just gotten to Hungary the night before it was still uh, not even lunchtime. I didn't know where to eat. I didn't, you know, there were a lot of things I had to take care of. So I excused myself. We made a plan to talk later. And as I walked away, I was thinking like, why did I, why did I have that weird, like, why was my subconscious trying to put up some filters? Uh, and, you know, and as I really dropped in, kind of listened, I realized like, oh, I know who that is. And what came to me as I really dropped in with it was that uh, when I was single, there were a couple times in my life where I was single for a long period of time, a couple couple years or more. And I was in a deep prayer for partnership, sacred partnership. And uh, I did a bunch of practices to call in my beloved. And uh, I, when I was sitting at my altar and doing those practices, over time, I felt this presence coming to me, and I actually a couple times saw vaguely a face, and I realized that it was his face and his presence that had come to me in those practices. And in fact, it had been so strong that, and then I was single for so long that I kept thinking that this beloved of mine was was somebody that was like my, my twin flame partner but not somebody who was embodied in this lifetime. And so I kind of had to felt like I had to come to terms with that and just appreciate this connection through, you know, the veil um, and just make do the best with the human relationship <laughs> possibilities. So um, as soon as that all dropped in, I was like, oh my gosh, my ego and my, you know, my busy mind, like, uh oh, I'm engaged to somebody else. What does this mean? And da, 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 da. And I just decided, you know, if he really is who I think he is, then it's not going to be a problem. Love doesn't, you know, love doesn't cause harm. And this is obviously something bigger than myself. And I'm just going to let the story unfold. So we met up again later that day, and a bunch of magic happened. Uh, thunder and lightning and rain, and and uh, it brought us, you know, into this 
uh, opportunity to really connect in a platonic way, but in a way it was such a powerful soul connection. It was so obvious very early on that there was something really powerful, really cosmic and really deep. And by the end of that night, I had spilled the beans. I had told him everything about the, the veil, the re recognition of his soul. And I, I remember just, you know, the feeling was, I don't have an agenda. I don't expect you to be anybody for me or to me, but you are obviously an embodiment of the sacred masculine that I've been calling into my life. And the fact that you are here means so much to me and it brings so much hope and beauty and joy into my life already. And um, it was really sweet. And we had four days. We hung out throughout most of it, um, again, platonically, but there was just, just there was such a powerful, deep soul level intimacy. It felt way beyond what like a romantic or sexual connection would have provided anyway. Um, and at the end of that four days, it was like torture leaving. I sobbed all the way home over somebody I had known for four days. I This is not like me. I am not that kind of a person. I have a, often a very practical heart that's very able to not be attached and to honor, you know, let people go their own way. I was devastated and it was really intense to come home devastated and to process all this with my fiance who was amazing and actually did hold space for me in a in a really good way even though it was challenging. And over, you know, over the next, you know, few weeks, uh, we had a, a conversations and after a little bit decided that this was really big. This was a big connection this man, Gavin, and I had, and it was important to explore what, what it was all about. And so he came out for two months and um, the end of November 2018 through the end of January. And again, you know, my, my mind was like, wow, well, what's, what's this, well, how's this going to work out? What do I do with the fact that I'm engaged to this other man? And what does that mean? And I just, I just decided to let love take the lead to not try to manufacture, manipulate, scheme, or, you know, figure anything out. I, I trusted that something bigger than me had brought this into my life and that it Whatever the plan was, it was bigger than what I could imagine, and that I was just going to let it unfold. And what happened was the the natural organic progression of my relationship with my fiance revealed to both of us that while we loved each other and there were a lot of beautiful things between us that were very valuable, that we just actually didn't want the same things and weren't really the best match. And so that relationship came to a perfectly timed organic completion just as Gavin was coming to visit and uh and wow it was intense it was really powerful a lot of magic a lot of powerful symbols showing rainbows and and fish literally coming at us from the ocean to feed us and just all kinds of signs and internal uh, signs and inner knowing and seeing each other, really seeing each other and being seen. And uh, just it felt like in that two months that we had lifetimes of growth cycles and deepening and erupt, you know, the shadow coming up and moving through. And it worked us really, really hard. And one of the things that became really obvious was just all the pieces in our lives that we had been working on creating you know some some felt like they didn't have any place to land in the third dimension but wow they all fit together perfectly and we realized that we both have been wanting to be in a partnership with someone who could go deep and do the transformational work that's possible in sacred relationship and that we both had learned a lot and had um, 
you know, learned a lot and, and believed a lot and the, like had theories, but had longed to actually put them into practice and relationship. And we, we could now, and we were, and it was amazing. And we realized that this was a journey we were on, a journey with love and that we wanted to create a business together of sharing all the things that we had been formulating and working with on our own and sharing in a very transparent way how that works because we don't know. We actually don't know the outcome, but what we are both committed to is truth, being of service, integrity, and um, letting love pray us, letting love show us our prayer for our lives and to be super transparent so that other people who want this big epic love to have some kind of sense of support. Because, you know, the thing is a lot of people are in a prayer and really deeply desire for that big epic cosmic twin flame soulmate love. But the reality is it doesn't mean that as soon as you get together, like everything's perfect, the heavens open, there's no more challenges. What happens is all of your core, it's a, it's a transformational path. You know, it is a path of immense quantum growth. And if you don't know how to work with your subconscious, if you don't know how to turn these conflicts that will definitely come up into greater intimacy, then it will kick your ass and one or both of you will run, you know, turn tail and <laughs> run. And it, you know, so if you want to actually be in it, stay in it and go the distance with somebody in sacred, deep, cosmic, intimate partnership, you have to know how to navigate it. And it, both of us are aware that our whole lives, we have been putting together these pieces and we are so far so good. So far, it's been amazing and magical. And we want to continue to share what that journey is like in a very transparent, raw, uncensored, vulnerable, no holds barred, putting it out there, sharing what we've learned, the things that make it easy, the things that can be um, difficult, how to navigate it so that you grow and become closer instead of the heart-wrenching, like kind of ripping you apart and leaving you for dead experience that can happen when you have a powerful, deep, intimate connection with somebody and the shit hits the fan. So we, we have created a website called Journey with Love, and we have a free gift for you. It is the practice that I was doing at my altar to call in my beloved when I could see Gavin's face <laughs> and feel his presence, and it's overlaid with his beautiful music. He's a musician and has created a beautiful soundscape to go with it so that you can drop really deep in and have uh, this deep journey and start calling in your beloved. And if you like that, you can uh, stay with us. It's a membership site. You can stay with us for the long haul, and we'll be doing what we call pillow casts, which is, um, like I said, these pillow talk, you know, sacred pillow book uh, conversations that are the things that are bubbling up in our relationship, the sweet, raw, vulnerable shares that are all loving and the raw, vulnerable shares that are our hard edges that are coming up. And so you'll be able to if you're if you if you've always wanted to sneak peek behind the curtains of, you know, a power couple's relationship and know what the inner workings of that are like, here's your chance. And the good news is we have made that membership site uh, you know, uh scaled to your income. So uh but let's just start with the free gift. Enjoy the free gift. See how you like it. See if you want to continue with us on the journey with love. And I'm going to include that information. It should already be here in this banner below. You can come check us out, journeywithlove.us. We're also on Instagram. It's journey.w.love. And uh, we are also on Facebook, Journey with Love Community. So we'd love to see you and thanks for tuning in and until next time.
May the source be with you. Bye-bye.